knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm all back down. I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie. White in the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead. Make my day. Black at the ace of spades, but 100, 100% American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the show. Jesse Lee Peterson is here. Thank you so much for being with me. I absolutely appreciate it. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. Rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I have with me Reverend Stephen Phelps. He is the senior minister at the church, at the uh, Riverside Church, Riverside Church in New York City. It's a church known for hosting MLK Beyond Vietnam speech in 1967. Reverend Phelps Church hosted a huge event in honor of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. In partnership with Occupy Wall Street and others, there was a march and a candlelight vigil at Riverside Church last night in solidarity with every Occupy movement around the world. Reverend Phelps, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation. Yes, sir. How did the event go last night? We had a really exciting time. We had uh, well more than a thousand people in the sanctuary last night. It was very exciting. Um, That's the, amazing. Uh, I read that you are part of the Occupy Faith Movement. What is the Occupy Faith Movement? Many of us clergy here in in the city, perhaps twenty to to forty active clergy had undertaken back in probably the first of October approximately, shortly after Occupy was getting underway, to express our support. Were you, I forgot to ask in the beginning, were you called by God or did you have to go to school to become a reverend? <laughs> that I think is a false distinction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you a yes or no on that. The, the calling of God is essential for a ministry in the church, but going to school doesn't deter one from from play, praying and discovering God's intention. Eight 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 seven seven. I've been to school. Oh, you did go to school. Sure. Oh, okay, let me take a quick break, Reverend, and we'll come back and pick up on this and take some calls as well. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three eight 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 seven seven J E S S E. Back in a moment. We're here three hours a day, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 to noon Eastern Time. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama, and I do appreciate it. Reverend Phelps, again, thank you for being with me. Let me ask, you support Occupy the Wall Street uh, movement, uh, Occupy the Wall Street movement. Do you support the Tea Party movement as well? I haven't been moved by the claims of the Tea Party movement. No, I haven't. And why not? What is it that uh, you disagree with them about? Well, I don't believe that the uh, when one focuses on the idea that my money is my money and I don't want it going to help other people, I don't think that's a good spirit. I don't think it belongs at the heart of America's great traditions of caring for the other. I hear something in Tea Party movement members that's focused on anxiety and fear, and I, I want to encourage people to be optimistic and hopeful and helpful and open, and, and I don't hear that too much. Are you familiar with Occupy the Dream? You heard of them, right? Well, I'm, I've met Dr. Ben Chavis, and, and so I am familiar with it. I haven't studied what his goals are yet. 
Uh, their goals are, and they are having rallies as well with Occupy Wall Street. They're, they're, they have three demands. One is they want absolute funding of federal Pell Grants, and those are uh, grants that you get and you don't have to pay back. They want a moratorium on foreclosures and reparations from banks for predatory lending practices. And lastly, they want $100 billion from Wall Street for job training and placement. Does that sound like something you would agree with and Martin Luther King Jr. would agree with? I haven't read that. If that were accurate, I couldn't support it like that. But the fact is, is that we've got a really messed up mortgage system, and a moratorium usually means let's straighten things out. That's what I mean by question, and then move back into getting people to pay the right figure for what for the goods that they're that they're benefiting from. We'll people come, should, of course, pay for their benefits. When we come back, we're going to take some calls for you. Everybody in the mama want to talk to you. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Right after this break, talking about Martin Luther King Jr. and the Occupy Wall Street. Movement. Welcome back, eight 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 seven seven. Jesse, we're talking about Occupy. Well, we're talking about Martin Luther King Jr. Today is his uh, birthday celebration, even though his birthday was on Sunday. Do you support gay marriage and abortion? I support gay marriage, and I support the right of a woman to choose with her doctor what is the right thing to do at in the first the first trimester of her uh, pregnancy, second trimester potentially, certainly not the third. Did Martin Luther King Jr support homosexuality and abortion? I don't happen to know any statements of his on those two subjects. Do uh, you? Okay. Uh, from what I read, he personally did not, but a whole lot of folks are implying that he did. In my opinion, sending out the wrong message about Martin Luther King Jr., you know, Occupy Wall Street and Occupy the Dream and all this mess that's going on, it makes uh, Martin Luther King Jr. look like he was a perverted idiot because all the wrong people are out there celebrating his birthday in his name and pretending that this is what Martin Luther King Jr. would support. Do you think God, as a minister, you think God support abortion or, or gay marriage? I think that God is involved in the consciousness of human beings to help them make the most profound moral decisions that they need to make in their lives. So you think that he would encourage them to have abortions and or marry another man, two men or two women marrying? God would encourage that in their conscience. I think that you, the way you ask the question isn't, isn't all that helpful. The fact is, is that God is about bringing a person's moral consciousness to to a firm flame, a bright flame, and some choices in life are clearly moral when they are about loving another person. Is uh, homosexuality they, and abortion moral or immoral? It can. Let's put it a little differently. Can sexual relations be moral between two men or women? Can the uh, sexual relations between a man and a woman be immoral? The answer to both of those questions has to be yes, if the, the criterion of love and morality is in morality is I care for this other person absolutely. Is homosexuality about love or sex? I notice it's not about family, it's not about love, it's not about uh, um, uh, civil rights. It seemed to be well, about. Well, you're free to make those assertions. It seemed to be I, about I know sex. A lot of gay people, and it is up. It's absolutely about love. Well, I know this. What part of absolutely. that? Absolutely. What part of that is love? What part of two persons who say two I men, want to give my yeah, life two to men, you forever? Two men or two That's women? Love. What? Where's the love in the two men or two women doing that? Well, as, define me love, and you'll see the answer. What's your definition of love? Not hating. All right. So they clearly, two men can love each other by because they certainly don't hate each other. They love each other. But sex it's is possible. not love, though. Why do you bring sex into it all the time? Because that's what, made them, about, that's what made them a homosexual. But I don't talk about my sex with my wife all the time. I'm talking about loving her. But the homosexuals do, though. Some do. 
you, you can't generalize any more than you could generalize about an ethnic group and say all them, all those people are the same. You know how bad that is when people start talking about an ethnic group, generalizing. Yeah. You don't want to do that. You well, don't want to do that. Uh, is there anywhere in the Bible where God says that abortion or homosexuality is is love or good or right? Is there anywhere in the Bible where it says that? Well, we, we were talking a moment ago how we don't know <clears throat> about Martin Luther King's position because he didn't speak about it. Well, we also know that about Jesus. We yeah. don't have any comments about from Jesus except love your neighbor as yourself. How about when he says we, that, we two, have that? How about when he says Pardon that me? two men or two women is an abomination against God? Well, that's not Jesus. That's a, that's the Old Testament. And, uh-huh. and, of course, there are some words from Paul on that subject. Yes, you can find six, maybe eight passages in the entire Bible that that uh, put homosexuality in a, in a very uh, dark light. That's possible. And, and yet you have... But you can't so find much. anywhere in the Bible where it put it in a positive light. You can find in the Bible that is evil and is wrong, but nowhere in the Bible you can find where it's right. That's true. There are no positive statements about that action. And I think here's the reason. In the perception of humanity, down through many, many, many generations, the only time that anybody observed any homosexual activity was when it had an abusive purpose and character. So, for example, in the stories of the Bible where there are two of them that could come to mind, but I'll be quick about it. Yeah, give me, one, sh- give me one short one. Yeah, we want to get you some calls here. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a story where men abuse a man in order to humiliate him. They're not homosexuals, but they sure have done something horrific in their in their sex act with him. And the main point here is that's all the Bible could see. That's all the people of the old times could see. And that's certainly behavior to be to be prescribed, to be judged, to be written off. But what we see in gay men and gay women marrying is nothing to do with abuse and humiliation like that. Amazing. According to Albina King, the niece of Martin Luther King Jr., uh, she says uh, her uncle did not support abortion. Uh, He was anti-abortion and that Planned Parenthood has lied about her uncle. Isn't that amazing? I have to tell you, it would, it would take Martin Luther King Jr. to come back and tell us who he really was and what he stood for because it's been so diminished today. Occupy Wall Street and Occupy the Dream, they, uh, in all reports that I've seen and I've interviewed a number of these people on, here on this show, they, don't, they seem to be out of touch with what they are doing and why they are there. There have been rapes and robbery and murder in some cases, uh, they have uh, destroyed private properties. They are protesting Occupy Wall Street when they really should be protesting the White House because they are the one that gave the, the blacks and the Mexicans the loan on a Fre- 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 Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And the people don't really, and they are jealous and envy of the hardworking, wealthy people. Where is, why, do you, why would a godly man such as yourself support something that's so evil? Well, obviously, if all those allegations are the way you want to perceive it, then it's gonna, that's going to shut down the conversation. But wherever I see people struggling to have the individual recognized and honored and supported, no matter how small or how insignificant, that, to my, in my experience, that is the call of God through my understanding of the word in Jesus Christ. Well, then we I would think that just, you would support the Tea Party. Humanity yeah. in every single person. Well, then why don't you support the Tea Party if that's the truth? What you just said is... Because I, said, I hear them pulling in the ranks and saying, we're only for people like ourselves. We don't want to help strange people. Well, you're not that paying attention then. The, you're not really paying attention to what they're saying because what you just said about them is not true. Well... Then we both have something to learn, don't we? We do. Reverend Phelps, thanks so much for coming on with me. I appreciate it. You bet. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. This has been the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, produced by Bond Action. To access the podcast of this show, visit us on the web at bondaction.org.